Well, hello and welcome to the Mom Live Show, where we are empowering mom entrepreneurs to create businesses that support their desired lifestyles through our Lifestyles by Design series. Today, we're tackling a critical aspect of entrepreneurship, and that's assembling your dream team. As a small business owner, it's common to wear multiple hats and handle various tasks. However, if your goal is to build a business that offers freedom and peace of mind, it's time to step into the role of CEO and delegate those tasks effectively. In this episode, we'll guide you through the process of identifying key roles to fill within your team, allowing you to focus on your strengths and achieve the work-life harmony that you desire. All right, so we're going to dive in and discover how you can unlock the power of a well-rounded team with our topic today, Lifestyle by Design, Building Your Dream Team for Freedom and Peace of Mind. All right. Well, thank you for joining me once again. I am Rashida Green, the founder and CEO of Get Right Coaching, the host of this wonderful community, the Mompreneur HQ community, and the creator of the Digimompreneur Academy, where I help moms who are determined to find time, money, and location freedom to start, grow, and scale home-based businesses or online businesses so that they can build the life of their dreams without neglecting themselves or their families in the process. And I do that through coaching, content, community, and now the Digimompreneur Academy. If you are joining us live, make sure that you put in the comments hash, hashtag live and tell us where you're joining us from so that we know the reach that we have as a community in the Mompreneur HQ. All right, grab your pencil, your paper, your pens, your digital device so you can take notes because we want to make sure that you, as you are creating the lifestyle that you desire, that you're doing so by building a team, a dream team, that's going to handle the, the tasks that you don't want to handle that still need to be done and are crucial in order to be a business owner. All right, let's get into it. As we look at being small business owners, you're likely performing a lot of roles in your business, right? I know that I juggle a lot of them myself, which is why I now have a small little team, a small team that helps me to get through all of the things that I need to get through. But you know what? Even though you may wear several hats, such as customer service representatives, you're the secretary, you're the graphic designer, you're the web designer. How about you provide technical support as well as bookkeeping and so forth? The problem with this is, it's not a good way to do business if you want to build a business that supports your lifestyle instead of building a business that gives you a job. Right in a big business or a large car corporation, they they even hire a CEO or a chief executive officer whose responsibilities include planning, organizing, and managing the vision of the owner. So you, if you choose to, don't even have to be the CEO of your own company. You could just be the president, and you or you can just give your designate yourself another title and let somebody else run the day to day, like an OBM or, or online business manager or someone to that effect. But either way, that's the role you should seek to fill as a small business owner with an online business. That would be the one of CEO. If the work goes outside the scope of what a CEO does, then you should work towards delegating those tasks to provide other people an opportunity to do that for you and become a part of your team. That's the only way to get the freedom and the peace of mind that you really are seeking. To accomplish, to accomplish this sooner rather than later, you need to put in a plan to make this happen. Once you reach the, this milestone where you are the CEO of your business with a valuable team in place, you can even seek to delegate the CEO position to someone else at some point. But for now, at least work toward becoming the CEO and not the employee of your own the employee of your own business. You don't want to be just another worker working in your business. So let's talk about those roles that you might want to fill. If you're just joining us, remember that we are talking about lifestyle by design. This is part of a series that we've been doing for the last few episodes now. And this topic is building your dream team for freedom and peace of mind. So now that you've caught up with that, let's talk about the positions that you want to uh, try to fill. Now, one of them, I have not gotten there yet. And let me just tell you, 
it's not because I don't have the desire or that I really love doing the, the, the banking stuff. So I'm just going to keep it to myself, but it may be because of a little bit of disorganization and the feeling of I'm not ready to get to hand this stuff over because I'm not prepared. I like to be the person that hands off this stuff in a nice, neat pile where, you know, and all information is there and they can just take it and do what they need to do. But since I have to like pull stuff from here, there and everywhere, it's like, oh, I don't think I want to throw that bird, throw that at anybody at this point in time. But that's the whole point. Get it together, get it to them and get it done. So when you're thinking about your business finances and all those things that you have to put together, the person that the first person that you might want to consider is a CPA, a certified public accountant or a tax planner and preparer, such as an enrolled agent. Those enrolled agents can help you get your stuff put together so that you can present them for tax purpose, you know, for tax filing at a later time. Even though many people do start their business without the benefit of these experts. For most people, they find out later that it can be a huge mistake. Like after a month not doing what you need to do or putting it off and then having to crunch, do come crunch time for April 15th for tax day or missing deadlines that you really needed to have made. Many businesses, especially small ones like the, a solopreneur, end up struggling or going out of business because of the taxes they owe or fines they need to pay as the cost of doing business without a proper setup. So you want to consider a certified public accountant to make sure that your finances are in order so that you don't get into a crunch trying to do your, file your taxes or get caught out there not doing what you're supposed to do and have be fined or have your business snatched. Another one is a business lawyer. Keeping a business lawyer on retainer is a great way to ensure that your business follows all of the con contract laws and any other laws that you need to follow for your particular type of business. When you put someone on retainer, you typically pay something monthly or yearly even that does not get refunded. So if you don't use it, you lose it. That's pretty much how that works. But it is also something that can be applied to the cost of any services that you do require up to a specific number of hours. So with me, I don't have a, a lawyer on retainer, but I do have a lawyer. I do have a, a trademark lawyer that I work with that um, is working on uh, my, my trademarks. And I do have a, a monthly paid service that I use to be able to, so I guess that is a retainer of sorts. Um, but I did get it through an MLM, but it is illegal services that I can use at any time for any particular business use. I paid for personal and business use, and I'm able to ask questions, send in documents for review and things that are outside the purview of my initially pay, initial payment. I can get discounts and things like that to speak to someone about my particular needs. So that is definitely helpful for me. So I use it both for personal and for business, but it's a service that I pay. And so now as I'm thinking about it out loud, that is some, somewhat of a retainer. The next position, after we've talked about the certified public accountant and the lawyer, business lawyer, and again, business lawyer in particular, because you don't want a divorce lawyer saying, telling you what to do with your business. You don't want to go to the legal aid who has not actually worked with business and does work with real estate agents to be providing you information about how to run your business. You want to make sure that you're working with a lawyer who knows about business and entrepreneurship, who can give you the best advice on how to handle different aspects of your business. Another person that you might want to think about is a secretary or a customer service representative, or even a virtual administrative assistant. Now having someone else do the, these tasks, I just, are totally worth it to me. Your virtual assistant can handle customer service issues, low blog posts, edit, write letters, clean out your email box, and a whole host of other things for you that you don't need to be doing yourself. They can sometimes also act as a little bit of a project manager if they have experience, which means you could give them the instructions to pass on to others. 
or be like the OBM I was talking about, they handle all of the online business management. So if there are designers, if there's, if there is virtual assistant, if there is editors or video, video editors or podcast director, that person would handle the management of that team to make sure that all the tasks that you need for your business are getting done. So I have a, a virtual assistant, love her, and she helps me out with all of my social media aspects. So she does social media, my social media posting, commenting, checking me when it comes to celebrating birthdays. So she does all of that for me in addition to assisting me with my membership. So we, in the membership, we, we give social media posts and captions. So she handles that aspect of it as well. She's also a task manager, making sure that I'm staying on task and reminding me of deadlines. So definitely excited about having Maricel on my team or having a virtual assistant to be able to assist me in certain tasks that are going to help me to move my business along. I also have a team that assists me with my tech. So I think I mentioned this to you before that I have a team that sets up my landing pages, squeeze pages, whichever you want to call it, drops in my blogs for me, updates my YouTube channel, my videos. So they handle all of the systematic stuff, the auto automations, like the auto email, email marketing. They handle the email setups and auto responders. So they handle that. So that's another team. Um, that handles that. And then I have a team of designers that can, that put together my stuff for my membership academy. So in the run, run tier of the Digimonpreneur Academy, we have blog posts that we have private label rights products. So these are items that you can, that, that we create templates and items that we create for your personal use. So you can take our blogs, which we give four blogs, four social media posts to promote your blog. And those social media posts include image graphics and captions, as well as blog banners. So if you use one of our blogs, guess what? You have a blog banner that you can put on top of your blog page so that people know what's coming in the uh, blog below. And then you also get the social media graphics and, con and captions to promote your blog. So my graphics team handles blog writing. They handle my Canva templates because you also get Canva templates inside the Digimonpreneur Academy on the tier level where you can use those templates to resell. These Some of them are pub, private label rights. Those resell rights to take these templates, Canva templates, and drop them in your Etsy or Shopify store and sell them. So we have that available to you in the Digimonpreneur Academy and my design team handles that. I also do trainings drop trainings and new training every month and workbooks and planners and journals. All of this is in the Digimonpreneur tier and the de design team helps me to get all of that done each month. So they are doing the training, meaning I have trainings that I record. So they're PowerPoint presentations that I do the voiceover on and record them. And then I have my tech team add them to the course platform in my, on my website. So once you become a member of the Digimonpreneur Academy, these are things that all the things that you have access to on a monthly basis. And these are the team members that I use. So I told you, I have my lawyer who's working on my trademarks. I have a couple of them out there pending. It's actually more than a couple. It's about four, but I have my trademark lawyer who handles that. I have lawyer documentation that I get. I have a couple of lawyers within my community that I actually work with to get those things done. So their business, online business, experienced and knowledgeable, and they help me with my contracts and documentation to cover me, like my disclaimers and things like that within my, on my website pages and things like that. So I have the lawyers covered and I also have the group on retainer for business questions and contract reviews. Then I have the virtual assistant who helps me with social media and so forth. And then I have the, the graphics team that does all my designs for my Digimonpreneur Academy. And then I have the tech team that sets up everything on the back end for me. So that is one complete team that helps me to get things moving. And then I also have a business coach, but that's not part of this lesson for today. But these are the, some of the things that I've obligated myself to, that I've extended myself with because if I was one person trying to do all of these things and doing as much as you see that I do, it would be 
a tremendous weight. But that is one of the things about getting yourself a team of people that can assist you. And as your business grows, you'll see that you'll see how that benefits you to have a team. So I talked about having a secretary. I talked about being able to have someone who supplies uh, tech support and also want someone who does website and internet design for you. Now, again, my tech team does all of that stuff, but you may have different separate teams for that. So your tech team may only do website or may only set up your, your let's see if you're using Kajabi or something like that. They may set up set that up for you. So you may have different people do it. But at the end of the day, the another thing that you should not be doing yourself for your or for your business is web design unless you truly love it and are skilled in it. Instead of spending all day updating your websites, landing pages, sales pages, and, and, and all of that, your expert that you hire can do that for you, usually much faster and a lot prettier than you. Another person that you want to get in the pocket is marketing and marketing expert. I am going to be looking into that myself because if you plan to use online advertising, funnel systems, and social media marketing, hiring an expert to do that, to help you with that is really going to help you to overcome a huge learning curve. Frankly, it's a waste of money spending money on ads when you don't even know if you've properly targeted your audience, right? Because with the whole social media marketing and, and Facebook ads, you have to know who you're going to be advertising to because it doesn't matter if you, oh yeah, I got a reach of 200,000 people or a reach of 2 million people. If that reach that you've extended with your paid ads is to the wrong audience. Now you're getting a bunch of people on your email list or, or a lot of people who are seeing your paid advertisement that's not really a qualified lead. So an expert can ensure that everything is designed properly before you even spend money on the ads. Another person would be a software expert. If you are using any particular software that does a lot, whether it's ClickFunnels, Teachable, Office 365, Google, Google is massive, whatever it is that plays a major role in your business, you'll get a lot more out of it if you hire an expert to help you perfect your systems and processes using that software, like if they know the ins and outs, like even with Canva, y'all, I'm going to be talking about software experts, but even with Canva, I have found that I learn a little bit here and I, I know a little bit here and I know a little bit there. But when I started watching the Canva experts on, oh, I missed the, you didn't, you missed the air quote, air quotes, the experts on YouTube, I just found a lot more, found out a lot more about the things you can do with Canva. I thought you just make social media posts. Well, you can do so much more than that. And those experts who are skilled in that, they find all the loopholes. They find all the little hidden corners and hidden gems that you just would not have seen had you investigated it, investigated it yourself. Um, so I know that if you identify the most important resources that you need, you don't have to do all of them to make your work less time consuming and stressful. That's what you need to do. Put them in order so that you can research and price your price their services. Once you know how much you need to spend, you can start planning for it. And that includes how many products you need to sell in order to be able to afford this, this expert. I know I said a lot about hiring a team and you probably heard cha-ching every time I said something ringing in your ear, right? But it's all for a good reason. And I understand that being a solopreneur can offer a sense of independence and control over your business. You have the freedom to make decisions, set your own schedule and enjoy the fruits of your labor, right? It is also a testament to your resourcefulness and determination. However, while the solopreneur's path has its advantages, it's crucial to recognize the limitations in trying to do it all yourself, right? Juggling multiple roles can quickly lead to burnout, decreased efficiency, and missed opportunities for growth because you're so busy bogged down with your head down to getting the work done that you might be missing opportunities to partner with people, to develop a product that's going to be hot right now. You're so busy working on behind the scenes that you miss the trends or you missed um, the things that you could be doing to increase your income. 
When you acknowledge that you can't excel in every aspect of your business, you open doors to greater success. And I mean that with all sincerity, because in the beginning, you might be like, well, okay, well, they said I need email, mar I need to do email marketing. So I got to start a list. Well, I'm going to learn how to do MailChimp. I'm going to learn how to set up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now, mind you, I'm not saying that you can't, especially if you're just starting out. Why not learn what you can if you have free, free time and it's not a pressing issue? Go ahead and learn those skills because it's better to learn them and have an, it's good to learn them and have an idea of what's going on. Said so that one, if somebody, if that expert you hired doesn't show up the next day, you know how to do it. And two, because if you do hire an expert and they're char overcharging, you, you'll be able to know, understand their, whatever their price is, you'll be able to understand why their pricing is the way it is because you're like, okay, yeah, it is entailed. It is detailed or Mm -mm, it don't need to be that much. I'm going to find somebody else. Either way, having an understanding of those responsibilities is awesome, is great. It helps you to be able to move a different way when you know all those pieces. But think about it. The time that you're spending to learn email marketing every step of the way, doing your own A-B testing, doing your own email, sending out your own emails and changing up subject lines and scheduling them and writing them and then having to say, okay, well, I need a lead magnet and then going out there creating lead magnets and then going out there identifying magnets go the best for a particular audience and then trying to get in front of that audience by going to do these Facebook ads and then boosting ads and learning all this. It's just a lot trying to do it all yourself. And at the beginning, it's fine if you have time, if you're not pressed, if you just want to learn it for fun and then turn it into a business, that's great. But if your initial thought is, I'm going to do this business so that I can make money, some things you just may need to invest in up front so that you can get the wheel, the, the, you know, the wheel turning and then start learning it as you go and as you have more free time. Because if you're giving out, delegating out these tasks, to do to give you the free time that you need and the peace of mind that you need, then you have this extra time. If you're only working three or four hours a week, like right, the four hour work week, then you have some extra time if you want to learn it for fun to be able to do that, right? Building a well-rounded team allows you to leverage the strengths of others, delegate tasks that are outside of your expertise and focus on what you do best. It's an investment in yourself, your business, and your overall well-being. So remember, embracing the support of a team doesn't diminish your skills as an entrepreneur. You will still have skills. You will still have talents. You still have the ability to show, show up and show people how to um, build their businesses as well if you're a coach. So it amplifies your ability to thrive and create a life of freedom and peace of mind. So hopefully you're able to gain, write down some good nuggets on the type of team members that, and think about some of the team members that you might want to hire. And again, look at the need of your business. What comes first? What do you think you need the most help with? Now, I will tell you, not on my list is a sales team. Yes, you need to do sales. If you don't do sales, you don't get clients, right? But Hiring a sales team and you don't have a structure in place is not a that's not a success move. That's a messy move because the sales team is only going to be able to sell your product based on the the structure and information, the structure and the benefits and features of your product. If you don't have the product down down pack, if you don't have the messaging correct, if you don't have all the resources in place for the sales team to be set up successfully, then you're paying the sales team and you, they, you, and you still might not get the sales that you need. You may, the sales team may be able to get you on clients booked on your calendar, but you may not be able to close them if you don't have proper processes and processes in place to be able to handle that sales process. So add that to your list if you want. Salesperson, you do that. It would be nice to have that salesperson in place. But again, there are other steps that need to be in place before you can go ahead and hire that sales team. So, but think about that. We want you to have a lifestyle that you build by design. This is something that you're creating because you want a particular lifestyle at the end of the day, whether that means location freedom, time freedom, money freedom, or it just means nomad where you can live off the grid while someone else is, while your team is building your business for you, then so be it. This is the way that you do it. 
you set up a team that is able to do these things for you and help you to create the success that you want. Then I want to also mention that, as I mentioned in, in today's show, that we have the Digimompreneur Academy that will definitely help you to be able to get started with an online business whether it be looking to, you don't know where to get started. You don't know anything about how to do a business plan. You don't know anything about setting up your financials or anything like that. We have a course for that in the learning lab, which is the walk tier of the Digimompreneur Academy. We just had a sale. If you missed it, and I'm so sorry you missed it. You're going to need to go to the Digimompreneur.com and check out our Digimompreneur Academy to get access to the learning lab so that you can have the access to the courses that are going to help you to learn the skills that you need to learn to build your business. And we add a new course each month. So feel free to join us there. But if you want to go above and beyond, and like I said, get access to all those private label rights or done for you products and templates so that you can get started with your store like very quickly, then you need to join the Digimompreneur Academy, the run tier. It is a higher tier that is jam-packed with a bunch of services. So go ahead and check that out. All right. I want to thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of the Mom Life Show, where we are talking about lifestyle by design, building your dream team for freedom and a peace of mind. Remember, as a mom entrepreneur, you deserve a business that supports your lifestyle rather than consuming all of your time and energy. By embracing the CEO mindset instead of the employee mindset and assembling a team of experts, you can delegate essential tasks, ensuring your business runs smoothly while you maintain your focus on growth and balance. Take this first step by identifying the key roles you need to fill and exploring various resources to find the perfect fit for your business. Keep dreaming big and never forget that with the right team by your side, you can achieve extraordinary success. Join us next time on the Mom Live Show as we continue to empower mom entrepreneurs on their path to creating thriving businesses and fulfilling lives. Until then, take care and keep building the business of your dreams.